Hi, this is Ms. Vital, and this is the unit on the plasma membrane, which corresponds to Chapter 7 in the textbook. This is intended for AP Biology, Summit High School. The cell membrane is a selectively permeable membrane made of phospholipids and proteins. The cell membrane is also called the plasma membrane. A phospholipid has a polar head, which is hydrophilic, and a nonpolar tail, which is hydrophobic. Double bonds in the tail create kinks in the lipids, and that prevents them from packing close, creating a fluid. Nonpolar hydrophobic molecules can pass through. Polar hydrophilic molecules need to need help. This is accomplished by proteins embedded in the cell membrane. The fluid mosaic model basically represents the layer of lipids, the phospholipids, in motion with proteins embedded throughout. The bilayer of phospholipids creates a fluid that is somewhat similar to cooking oil at room temperature. Cholesterol helps to stabilize the phospholipids at body temperature in the membrane. Glycolipids and glycoproteins act as ID tags for the cell. As I said, there are different proteins embedded in the membrane that help to signal things or move things in and out of the cell. The cytoskeleton helps to hold the delicate membrane together. Glycoproteins are chains of sugars that are attached to a protein. Glycolipids are chains of sugars attached to a lipid. Again, they act as ID tags for differentiation in embryos or recognition by other cells. Membrane proteins perform most of the functions of the cell membrane. There are 50 kinds of different membrane proteins on the surface of a human red blood cell. Receptor proteins receive chemical messages from other cells. The shape of a receptor protein matches the shape of a specific messenger. For example, a hormone would be a messenger. When the two bind, it triggers a chain reaction, usually involving other proteins, which relay the message to a molecule that performs a specific function inside the cell. This is called signal transduction. Small molecules, like O2, can pass freely through the membrane. Larger molecules are assisted through by proteins. Diffusion is the spontaneous movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. The particles move down the concentration gradient. This requires no energy. This is considered a type of passive transport because it doesn't require energy. Diffusion occurs until equilibrium is reached. Oxygen in our lungs enters the red blood cells through passive transport. CO2 leaves the red blood cells and enters the lungs through passive transport. Osmosis is the diffusion of water. Osmosis is a type of passive transport across the cell membrane also. In a glucose solution, it's easier for water molecules to cross the membrane than large glucose molecules. During osmosis, water moves from the area of lower concentration to the area of higher concentration to try and dilute the higher concentration. The side with the lower concentration is called hypotonic. The side with the higher concentration is called hypertonic. So water moves from hypotonic to hypertonic across a selective permeable membrane. Water will continue to cross the membrane until the concentrations are equal on both sides. The type of solute isn't important, only the total concentration of solutes. Seawater contains many solutes, but will lose water to a solution with a higher concentration of only one solute. Isotonic is when a solution having the same solute concentration as another solution is reached. So in other words, when the concentrations on either side of a membrane become equal. If a red blood cell is put into an isotonic solution, the cell's volume remains the same. The cell gains water at the same rate as it loses water. The cell is considered isotonic. For example, starfish and crabs are isotonic to seawater. 
If an animal cell is in a hypotonic solution with a lower solute concentration, water enters the cell and it swells up and it may break, which is called lysing. Cells in a hypertonic solution or a higher concentration will shrivel and die from water loss. An animal needs to be able to prevent excess water intake or loss. Osmoregulation is the control of water balance. For example, a freshwater fish lives in a hypotonic environment and has kidneys and gills that constantly work to prevent excess water from building up. It is the opposite in a saltwater fish who lives in a hypertonic environment and the kidneys work to retain water. Water balance is different in plant cells because of the cell walls. In isotonic conditions, plant cells are flaccid and the plant wilts. In hypotonic condition, plant cells are turgid. They're pumped up and the plants are the healthiest. To become turgid, a plant cell needs a net intake of water. The cell wall prevents it from taking in too much water and bursting. Many substances don't diffuse freely across the membrane because of their charge, size, or polarity. Specific transport proteins can help these molecules move across. Facilitated diffusion is the passage of a substance across a biological membrane down its concentration gradient, aided by specific transport proteins. This is still a type of passive transport because it doesn't use energy. For example, substances that use facilitated fusion are sugars, amino acids, water because of its polarity, and charged ions. Active transport is the movement of substance across a membrane against its concentration gradient, and it's aided by specific transport proteins and requires the input of energy in the form of ATP. First, the solute binds to the protein. Then, ATP transfers a phosphate to the protein. The protein releases the solute outside the cell. The second solute binds to the protein. The phosphate detaches from the protein and the protein releases the second solute into the cell. Sodium potassium pumps transport sodium and potassium ions this way, which helps nerve cells generate nerve signals. Proton pumps in plant cells pump hydrogen out of cells, resulting in a positive charge outside of the cell. The return of hydrogen ions and protein help transport sucrose into the cell. Sucrose is stored in cells of, leaves, of leaf veins and can be transported to other parts of a plant. Exocytosis is the movement of materials out of the cytoplasm via membrane vesicles or vacuoles. This is considered a type of bulk transport and is used for the largest molecules moving in and out of the cell, something like a protein. Our tears are produced by cells in our tear glands using exocytosis to export a salty solution containing proteins. Endocytosis is the movement of materials like macromolecules into the cell by forming vesicles or vacuoles from the cell membrane. Phagocytosis is cell eating and it's taking in solids. The vesicle will fuse with the lysosome to digest the contents. Pinocytosis is cell drinking and that's taking in fluid. Receptor-mediated endocytosis is highly specific. The cell membrane indents to form a pit. The pit is lined with receptor proteins that bind to molecules. The vesicle forms and carries molecules into the cell.